I will share my slides. Okay, so. <clears throat> Is it fine for everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So thank you for welcoming me into this workshop and for allowing me to present this uh, talk. So I was uh, really interested by the topic uh, because of uh, the thematic, but also because I have done a research on Algerian descendants in New Caledonia which uh, led me to think that uh, the place where uh, migrants uh, can be buried may have an impact on future generations. And actually, I, to, to set this, uh, this presentation, uh, yesterday we had very interesting communications about the, some current migrations and uh, the death of migrants mainly in the Mediterranean Sea. So like uh, Kelly did yesterday, I will propose to move to Pacific Ocean, but also to start from the Mediterranean Sea. Um, the, the, the issue of uh, being migrant and dying somewhere and being buried somewhere, because I, I will specifically uh, discuss about people being buried somewhere, while yesterday we had some interesting talks actually, but based on people who died in the sea and the question of dying in the sea and not being able to find uh, the bodies. For my communication, I will, uh, on the other way, uh, present situa a situation where the buried bodies are in a place and where these uh, buried bodies can play a role in the integration of uh, their descendants into the new territory where the migration happened. This, uh, this questioning, which I have with, based on this situation of Algerian descendants, I actually had it last year uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic. And during the first lockdown where some like migrants in France would uh, died and the, the families were not able to move the, the bodies back to the home country for the burial. So most of them took, I mean, I also have some people in some relations which I have in France who actually needed to take the decision whether they would keep the the body until the frontiers would reopen so that the body can go back to the home country or they will take the decision to bury the, their, their parents, for example, in France, which was actually not the, the plan for these families. It's only because of the pandemic situation that they finally decided to bury their family members in France while the whole process was to bury them back in the home country. So uh, this questioning, which I had during the COVID uh, period, actually uh, brought me back to a research I did in New Caledonia with the descendants of Algerians. And uh, these people who were sent to New Caledonia uh, actually had no choice but to die in New Caledonia and to be buried there. And uh, this raised the question of, uh, how is the decision taken uh, with respect to the place of burial and how a crisis such as the one we have now with the COVID-19 or the one these people had uh, in the past with their situation of being prisoners in New Caledonia and not being able to go back to their home country, how uh, this uh, forced decision of being buried in, in, in a remote country can can play a role in the identity process for uh, future generations. So basically, this is the, 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 the core of my presentation. So the purpose is to investigate the issue of death in migration and the placement of bodies through the case of these descendants of Algerians in New Caledonia. So to settle the, the, the communication, what I can say is the first Algerians who arrived in New Caledonia were sentenced by the French colonial administration. 
So we were in the 19th and early 20th century. And these uh, Algerians had to serve their prison sentence in New Caledonia, which is, uh, I will present it later in my, in my PowerPoint presentation, but New Caledonia uh, was used by France at this time as a, as a, as a prison land and therefore some like many french people were sent there to sentence their prison in new caledonia but also people from algeria so um, just to present about new caledonia so basically this land is quite specific because it's based both on exile and occupation as the basis of society. So uh, New Caledonia was formerly known as a penal colony and land of exile. And New Caledonia today is engaged in a self-determination process, which can potentially lead to its independence from France. So basically, I mean, I know my presentation might slightly be different from others we had yesterday and we will have today, but uh, the, the core of this the presentation is that um, the current situation, the current political situation raises identity questioning for people living in the territory. And uh, the current context uh, actually leads to a very basic question, which is who should stay in New Caledonia if, if New Caledonia becomes independent from France. So uh, what's happening in New Caledonia is uh, during the whole 20th century, there was a kind of taboo uh, in New Caledonia, so the taboo of origins, most of the people did not want to talk about the past. Most of the people did not want to talk about their ancestors because they would link them to, to let's say, ugly stories about prison, about crimes, about uh, slavery, about colonialism. So there was this general taboo situation that the origins should not be mentioned. But with the current process, uh, with the current independence process, history has been put in the, in the spotlight. So most of the people now are going back to, to their family histories and to the territory's history to understand how they came to this place and what is their place in New Caledonia. So basically, uh, there is this uh, movement of going back to ancestors to justify uh, an, an individual's presence on the territory, which, I mean, this movement is allowed by two uh, parameters. The first one, as I mentioned, is the political situation. So basically, the, the independence raises the question of who should stay in the territory, but also because uh, archives were opened. So it, it, I mean, after, one century, some of the archives were open to public consultation. So many of the descendants do now have access to their ancestors' documentation. So basically, these two parameters make it now uh, possible for people in New Caledonia to, to go back to the, the past and try to identify themselves in the past and try to justify their presence in the past. So this is the first point which I wanted to highlight for this presentation. And the second one is that New Caledonia is a plural society. So uh, several communities do live in New Caledonia. Sometimes uh, they won't mix so much, but they live in the same territory. And the issue of cultural plurality and identity development also arises. Uh, it arises for the whole territory, but also for individuals. So basically, uh, what I wanted to, to mention by this uh, contextual presentation is that uh, my, my, my talk today is uh, within a very specific context, which is the New Caledonia context. So uh, a territory which is under uh, a strong questioning uh, process now, and a territory which is like investigating the, the, the last century, uh, the past history to, to justify its identity today. 
So uh, in this presentation, I did propose to focus specifically on the case of descendants of Algerians in New Caledonia. So my research was not based on burial uh, rituals. It was based on identity, uh, on the identity process. So basically my research question was uh, how identity is, um, how, Algerian descendants in New Caledonia do define themselves as like uh, considering their origins from Algeria and also the fact that now they are living in New Caledonia. So how um, they, they define their own identity in this cultural uh, plurality. So it was the, this was the, the topic of my research and I did nine uh, qualitative uh, interviews with, uh, this, uh, with descendants. And I propose today to not to discuss about this interculturation and plurality and pl cultural plurality. Uh, of, yes. Rashid, I'm sorry. Could you, someone ask, could you please go on full screen? I, I thought you, you would be, but someone told me you are not. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Is it better Is now? Someone? Yes, yes. Thank okay. you. Sorry. Uh, okay. So uh, basically, we, we can consider the circulation of bodies in migratory spaces with this question of returning to the past to understand the present. So there are three uh, main, uh, main elements which I want to highlight. First one is the French colonial history, which involves both Algeria and New Caledonia in the case of these descendants. Also the current New Caledonia situation with the self-determination process and uh, the, the trial to define a shared past and present identity for all New Caledonians and also the Algerians of New Caledonia from the Mediterranean Sea to the Pacific Ocean. So basically, um, so basically the first element is uh, growing in the homeland. Between 18... Uh, so between 1864 and 1897, uh, France has been sending North Africans to New Caledonia to serve prison terms. So 1,822 North Africans, mostly Algerians, were condemned to forced labor and had to serve their sentences in the penal colony of New Caledonia. These detainees consisted mainly of convicts for public uh, crimes, but also there were 121 political prisoners and 163 repeat offenders who were relegated to New Caledonia. Uh, what should be highlighted is that apart from the political prisoners who were authorized to return to Algeria, uh, the vast majority of the detainees uh, were not able, were not authorized to go back to Algeria. They had to serve the sentence uh, the prison sentence in New Caledonia. And once the prison uh, time was finished, they were not allowed to go back to Algeria and they had to stay in New Caledonia. So this was a specificity of these uh, prisoners, which um, actually are not considered as deportees on the administrative perspective. They are considered as transported prisoners, but they were not able to go back to to Algeria. So finally, they settled there. They were all men. So they all married with non-Algerian women, or so European or Melanesian or Asian women, which were present in New Caledonia at that time, and they raised families there. So uh, this uh, Algerian uh, detainees had to go all the way from Algeria by boat to New Caledonia. So it was about 20 to 30,000 kilometers uh, trip they had to do by boat. And then once in New Caledonia, they had to sentence the prison. And then, uh, as I was mentioning, most of them were not able to go back to Algeria and they stayed there and settled in New Caledonia. New Caledonia is actually in the Pacific Ocean, so nearby Australia and New Zealand. And when it was taken by France in 1963, New Caledonia uh, was uh, mainly populated by indigenous tribes of Melanesian origin, which are known as the Canucks. And France set up an immigration policy, so both chosen or compulsory, uh, to, 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 to 
to increase the, the, the colonial population in the territory. So this is a, a picture which I wanted to, to, to propose uh, just to show that uh, the type of prisoners which may which were present in New Caledonia. So we have like not a prisoner, but the indigenous Melanesian uh, people. They are they were people from European origins, and they were also the Arabs, uh, which they call them the Arabs, but actually are Algerians in New Caledonia. So um, dying from the homeland. What I'm taking a sentence from Isabel Merle, which she, she did a quite interesting work on also on the, the colonial history of New Caledonia, of New Caledonia. And what, what she says is that like Algeria, and despite its remoteness from the imperial metropolis, but also its relatively narrow island character, it was thought from the 1860s as a land of welcome for a French population who was, however, reluctant to migration. Like Guyana, it became during the same 19, 1860s a prison land promised to a future that was, however, more cheerful because it would not present the dangers of an equatorial climate, fauna, and flora. The Caledonian land, by the mildness of its climate and its nature, as well as by its celebrity, was to offer the condemned a peace and future as a basis to their rehabilitation. It was also to offer immigrants the hope of a better life, symbol of a powerful and generous colonial France. The Caledonian prison, far from being reduced to a strict repressive peni penitentiary institution as in Guyana, was in reality at the origin of a real dynamic of population. It brought, in fact, an ambitious colonial project at the crossroads between a so-called penal colonization promising a future to the condemned and the so-called free colonization offering the most precious good of this time to proletarians and modest classes, which is the land and the property of the ground. So basically this sentence helped us to understand that Caledonia was both used for as a prison, but also as a territory to colonize. And uh, France did uh, put several uh, artifacts to motivate people to stay in New Caledonia and to act as, um, as settlers there. So um, in case, so for the specific case of uh, Algerians in New Caledonia, they were, uh, they had this singularity that they had a uh, dual participation in the French uh, colonial history. First of all, they were fighting France as a revolt against a colonizing nation in their home country. So basically, they did uh, act against France where, when they were in Algeria. So this uh, created a proximity between uh, Algerian detainees and the indigenous Kanak community who were also experiencing uh, French colonization. But at the same time, the Algerian detainees were also involved in a forced participation in the new Caledonia colonization movement as they would get some reduced uh, prison sentences or they would also be given some rural concessions by the French administration if in new Caledonia they would participate to the colonization movement. So at the same time that they did have this proximity with the indigenous Kanak community, they also had a need for reconciliation with this indigenous Kanak community. So this double movement of being victims of colonization, but also being participation in this colonization and this settlement in, um, in New Caledonia. So uh, I, I propose a quote from one of the descendants. His name is Tayeb Aifa. He was the mayor of a city uh, in New Caledonia, which is called Burai where most of the Algerian descendants do live now. And Tayeb Aifa says that our fathers exiled from their lands often given to settlers became concessionaires on lands taken from Kanak tribes. For them, history has been reversed. The colonization they suffered in Algeria, they would in turn often in spite of themselves become its agents, not to live on it, but to survive. So uh, for this, uh, Rashid, you, yeah. you have two minutes left. S sorry? Two minutes okay, left. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So basically for this uh, Algerian descendants, I wanted to present the, 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 the cemetery. 
so um, so the cemetery became the first place of heritage for these descendants. What happened is that uh, at the beginning, the first detainees were buried uh, independently of their religion, but in nineteen in eighteen ninety seven. Uh, the Arabs gathered in the city of Borai and asked uh, to be buried together and to respect the Muslim ritual for death. So this cemetery was claimed, and one of the one of these uh, Arab uh, Algerian detainees, which who was called Sidi Moulay and was considered as a saint there, he died in 1891, and one of the other detainees, Milud Ben Abdullah, offered a plot of land for the cemetery river reserved for these uh, Arabs in New Caledonia. So this was the first settlement of dead bodies in uh, New Caledonia, which led to the, to the federation of the community, because once the cemetery was created, all the Arabs in the New Caledonia island uh, became, started to gather in Burai because they wanted to die in this town so that they were sure that they would be buried uh, respecting the Muslim uh, rituals. So the tomb of Sidi Moulay, the saint, comes um, to this sacred land and the cemetery anchored the presence of the first Algerians to Burai and embodies the birth of a filiative community, the, defend, the descendants identifying in a symbolic genealogy with the Sidi Moulay and the first Algerians who are buried there. The cemetery, which also hosts graves of Catholic families, is an intercultural image of these descendants. Date palm trees rest with the dead bodies. Several types of tombs uh, also are present from very simple and anonymous tombs to respect the Islamic tradition, covered with earth and without any tombstone, to marble tombs with a rounded shape and a pointed end as a reminiscent of a Moses dome. All the burials face the same direction, which correspond to an orientation towards the Kaaba, a cubic uh, structure in the town of Mecca in Saudi Arabia, which is the direction uh, for dead bodies uh, burial. So all the burials face the same direction, and within the cemetery, some funeral decorations and sculptures represent angels, while for others, we know the presence of crescent moon and star. And the tomb of Sidi Moulay is identifiable because it is surrounded by wall. I just want to finish uh, this presentation, and sorry for the delay, with a picture of this cemetery. So this is the either Arab or Muslim or Algerian cemetery in New Caledonia, which uh, you can see now in uh, the city of Burai. And these are the tombs where you can see a mixed uh, type of tombs, uh, which we can found in the cemetery. And you see how the interculturation, intercultural identity of the descendants can also be uh, understood from the, the, the types and structures of tombs we found in the cemetery. And this like picture, uh, you still see the, the graves and you see the wall which surrounds the tomb of the saint, uh, the Sidi Moulay saint. And actually there's a, a rebuilding of a, of, a, of a Muslim cemetery in this land, which acted as a gathering uh, symbol for Arabs in New Caledonia, and which is today the place of, um, of, uh, of uh, this cemetery is actually the place of gathering for of gathering for the descendants today. Whenever they have like a special event, they would uh, do this event nearby this cemetery. Okay, sorry, Thank I you. will end my presentation here. And once again, sorry for for delaying the the presentation.